What is going on guys, Fitcho here and welcome back to the Fitcho career. It is episode number 6 of season 2 and today we're here in Austria at the Red Bull Ring for today's Austrian Grand Prix. And as you can see, the rain is falling for today's Grand Prix. We're going to be starting this race on intermediate tyres, but I believe the rain is going to get a little bit heavier later in the race. There is the possibility we might have to move onto the full wet tyres, but we'll see how that plays out throughout the race, but these uh, these conditions I do quite like. I am very, very quick in the wet conditions. I've said it before and I'll say it again. And in qualifying, which was also wet, I was really, really quick, but as you can see, I'm starting last on the grid. You're probably wondering why I've just said I'm really quick and I'm starting last on the grid. And that's because I bottled it in qualifying. I'll put the footage up on the screen right now. Coming out of the final corner, I just lost the back end on the exit curb on the outside through the final corner. We were we were set to take pole position quite comfortably here in Austria in the wet con uh, intermediate conditions. And we lost it around the final corner. I could not believe it when it happened, but... Those things happen, you make mistakes sometimes, there's not much you can do about it. But going into this race, we're hoping to bounce back, because of course last time out, we had a uh, interesting weekend in Azerbaijan, with a very close proximity of the barriers. Usually, I like street circuits, having the barriers there, it sort of gets me going, and I have a lot of fun on those sort of tracks, but things just didn't work out in Austria, uh, not Austria, Azerbaijan, lots and lots of mistakes throughout that race, and we ended up DNFing with less than z uh, zero corners to go in unbelievable fashion there with an incident with Max Verstappen, but we're hoping to bounce back. Qualifying, we didn't really bounce back. Like I said, we bottled it, we spun out of the final corner, so that is not helping our confidence, but these conditions, we are strong in these conditions, and hopefully we can put together a good race. It sounds like the weather is going to get a bit heavier, so it's going to be about timing or swap to the wet tires right, assuming we actually have to make the swap, or even if it dries up, you know. The weather here in Austria in the mountains is always unpredictable, but the forecast is to get heavier. But anyway, after I bottled it, we should have a look at who actually took pole position, and today we have a Ferrari on pole, the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel, and the margin to second place man Sergio Perez, 0, 0.000 of a second, that is right guys, it was a dead heat for pole position between uh, Sebastian Vettel and Sergio Perez, and it's also good to see Perez getting up on the front row of the grid, and out qualifying his uh, teammate championship leader, Carlos Sainz, these weather conditions seem to suit Perez, and hopefully, he'll be hoping at least, to turn his season around here in Austria, anyway, continuing down the grid on the second row of the grid, you have Daniel Ricciardo and uh, Perez's teammate Carlos Sainz will be starting out of fourth place. And the top four were covered by less than a tenth of a second. So very, very close at the front of the field. In fifth place, you have Max Verstappen with Antonio Giovinazzi alongside him for company. Then you got Stoffel Van Dorn and Fernando Alonso. Then Hulkenberg and Bottas round out the top ten. It looks like Williams have the upper hand on Force India in these wet conditions here in Austria as Grosjean and Verlein will be sharing the sixth row of the grid in 11th and 12th with... Um, Pierre Gasly actually out qualifying the Force India of Esteban Ocon. He'll start 13th with Ocon alongside him in 14th. That's the other Toro Rosso and the other Force India. Kvyat getting the upper hand on Giotto. So Force India seem to be struggling with these wet conditions. And you've got Charles Leclerc in 17th. Kamui Kobayashi, our teammate, in 18th. Delatraz in 19th. Uh, 19th. Magnussen struggling after his good result in uh, Baku. And then you've got Oliver Rowland just in front of us in 21st. And of course, us in 22nd. 15 seconds off pole position after we did a little flick spin on the straight. Like I said, not a good qualifying session, but these conditions suit me, and hopefully we can fight back through the field. Here we go, engage the clutch, get the revs up as the lights come on. We've got five lights, and it's lights out, and away we go. The Austrian Grand Prix is underway. A lot of wheel spin off the line, up the inside of Kevin Magnussen, who's not got the best start, and we get past both of the BMW Sounders as we head down towards turn number one, lock up both fronts. There are cars all over the place, very, very cautious through the first corner is now alongside the Toro Rosso and Luca Giotto but on the inside he's giving us a little bit of a squeeze as we're in the slipstream of his teammate Esteban Ocon is up towards turn number two there are cars all over the place early on the brakes up the inside of the Force India into turn number two as Alonso has fallen down at the start not the best start for Alonso surprisingly enough as we sneak past Verline better traction 
out of t Oh, we've got a VSC. I'm not too sure what that is for as the cars in front of us give us a little bit of a brake check as they always do when the VSC comes out. Not too sure what this is for, but nonetheless, we've already worked our way up all the way into 13th place. A very nice start. We got good, we, we got good traction off the grid and then just picked our way through the field with some nice moves. Being a bit cautious at the start of this Grand Prix. And that has, that has actually surprisingly worked uh, quite well. Up nine positions now into 13th place and hopefully we'll get back to racing any second now and we continue to fight through the field and the points are only a couple positions away you can see Grosjean up there in the Williams in 10th place then you've got Alonso and Gasly between me and him and looking further forward I can't really see it looks like on the minimap someone has jumped got a bit of a start a breakaway at the start but the VSC has put a stop to that for now and come on let's get back to racing I don't even know what this VSC is for Surely we can go racing again here in Austria any second now. As it looks like in front of Grosjean, you have the Renault of Hülkenberg and then the two McLarens. Come on. Come on, Charlie. Why have we got this virtual safety car? Here we go. Going back to racing any second now. Come on. We're all backing up through turn number one. Go green now as we can get a good exit off turn number one. Now to the inside of Pierre Gasly and we get that move done now into 12th place in the slipstream of Fernando Alonso in his Renault up towards turn number two. He thinks about it up the inside of Grosjean and I just go a little bit cautious. Him going for the move made me sort of back out a little bit. Now onto the power out of turn two. So much better traction than Fernando Alonso and we just sneak up his inside into 11th place. Now on the back of the Williams of Roman Grosjean. Can we look up his inside down into turn number three late on the brakes up the inside of the Frenchman and now into the points as we have the other Renault of Nico Hülkenberg now directly in front of us trying something up the inside of this left-hander is never going to work in these tricky conditions. We've just got to be patient behind the German. Right on the back of Nico Hülkenberg as we run up towards turn number two and he's going to the outside of Valtteri Bottas. No, I'm not going to make that three wide and go for a move on the pair of them. They're going to trip over each other through turn two, try to get better traction out of the corner. A very tight line on the exit, but superior traction to the pair of them. And we get past both Bottas and Hülkenberg just like that, using our head and not trying anything too stupid. And we're already up into eighth places. Now we have the other McLaren of Stoffel Van Dorn in our sights directly in front of us. And then it is Max Verstappen just in front of him. He is usually quick in these wet conditions, but he doesn't seem to be making much headway. He's actually dropped a position so far in this Grand Prix. We're really catching up to the back of Van Dorn now. Just got to be patient. We, Like I said, I don't want to try anything too stupid. I know I've got the pace. If I just be patient, I can get past these guys in a safe manner. We've got a run on Van Dorn, a nice exit out of the final corner as we set the fastest lap of the race up the inside of the Belgian down into turn number one. We're a little bit cautious on the brakes as now we're understeering a little bit wide. We give him a squeeze and we get that move done now into seventh place as up next we have Max Verstappen. Right on the back of Verstappen to his inside on the exit of turn number three. It's going to be the outside four, five. We get the move done before the corner. We are really getting good traction out of these corners. We're just able to hook the car up when we get on the power and that's how we've made the large majority of our overtake so far. So Jeff was just talking about the tyre situation and thinking about possible wet tyres. We're saying not yet. There's not enough standing water. So that indicates to me that the rain is starting to get a little bit heavier. I haven't actually noticed anything myself while driving. It still feels pretty similar, but it doesn't sound like wets are very far away. As we've caught up to Antonio Giovinazzi now in the Ferrari in fifth place, of course. Our GP2 championship rival, Giovinazzi, have caught up a lot through turn number three. Can we do the same move on the power out of turn number three? And we do that successfully now up into fifth place as Jeff was saying something about heavy rain staying. So I guess that means this is now technically heavy rain conditions as we set another faster sector. So it sounds like wet tires really are not that far away but we haven't got the alternate strategy yet so I don't feel like it is time to pit. None of the cars in front of us are diving into the lane just yet. Another fastest lap just like that as we're starting to close up on the Tyrrell of Carlos Sainz who seems to be stuck behind our compatriot Daniel Ricciardo 
as the rain is now starting to get a little bit heavier, I'm feeling it. I'm starting to notice the rain is getting a bit heavier since that radio message from Jeff. So I think we could be on to the full wet tires very, very soon as looking ahead. We are not far off the lead of this race's better traction than Sainz as he struggles out of turn number two. And we're now up into fourth place just like that. We have amazing traction compared to everyone else in the field right now. We're not going to try anything stupid on the brakes on Ricardo as he's parking in the middle of the corner. We should be able to get better traction. Yes, we can. And now up onto, a po onto the podium, into a podium position just like that. And now Jeff, I missed what he was saying, but again, he is talking about switching to full wet tires again. But we haven't had the alternate strategy pop up just yet. So the alternate strategy on this game is usually a good sign when to make the switch. So we're just going to stay out on track for now unless some of these cars peel off into the pit lane in front, which they don't. Now Now we'll pass Ricardo. We need to set our sights our science on Sebastian Vettel and Sergio Perez. The race of the front two in this race. And a Ferrari is leading a race. I think this is the first time in this series. We've said another fastest lap that Ferrari have been leading or at least properly leading you know in sync with all the pit stops oh Perez is going for it on Sebastian Vettel down into turn number two can the Mexican make the move yes he can into the lead of this race and this is giving me a golden opportunity as Vettel's crossing over my line right there I had to jump out of the throttle very aggressive from the four-time world champions now he's fighting back on Sergio Perez down into turn number three we have a great Great angle of this fight as Vettel is backed out of it right around the outside of the German. And now into second place, his attempted move on Sergio Perez has backfired in the face, in his face. And he's lost a position to us as we sneak up into second place. There's the alternate strategy. There we go, alternate strategy. This will be for the full wet tires as I'm too busy looking at the alternate strategy. We want it a little bit wide. And now Vettel is going to be right on our tail. I wouldn't be surprised to see all the cars diving off. Into the pit lane, there goes Sergio Perez. Now we are going to follow him. Careful on the pit entrance. This is a difficult pit entrance. Quite fun as well in the drive in the wet. It's a little bit difficult as now we slow it down for the limiter. I don't want to cut it as fine as I did in uh, Azerbaijan in Baku. I cut it so fine in um, Azerbaijan. I watched it back. It was zero meters to go and I was 3k over and there was zero meters to go and I was bang on the limit. I couldn't be any closer as we now bolt on the full wet tires. Oh, we're being stopped in the lane. We're being held. Our pit lane position coming back to bite us. We've lost out to Vettel and Ricardo who also pitted with us. That's always, I knew that would happen some stage throughout this season. Of course, Toyota being new to the sport, we're going to have a very poor pit lane position right at the end and has come back to haunt, haunt us here in Austria as we've dropped down to 12th place with this pit stop and I'm assuming all you know the teammates not making their stop straight away here in uh, Austria to avoid the stacking and now we have to re-overtake Ricardo and Sebastian Vettel to get nice traction off turn number two to the outside of our compatriot Daniel Ricardo on the run down towards turn number three we're on the outside I'm not too confident on the brakes he's going to come back up our inside we have to run it very very wide and we get back on the power and we get that move done is now on the back of Sebastian Vettel amazing traction off turn three up the inside of five and we just don't get it oh he's run wide he's running it wide through turn number five up the inside of Sebastian Vettel I think we have that move done now into what I believe is a net second place as Sergio Perez is starting to run away at the front of the field here we go we've got a lot of cards in the pit lane I am assuming this is all the cars that didn't stop on the previous lap for the full wet tires as Giovinazzi is just there coming out of the pit lane. Is he going to jump? Sebastian Vettel is we're getting all over the place. Squirmish with the rear end and Giovinazzi has jumped his teammate all the way up into third place now. So actually going for the overcut with the stop gun swapping onto the intermediate tires actually worked an absolute treat for the Italian. Oh, we've locked up into turn number two. And we're very, very wide on the exit across the grass. We have built up a bit of a lead to the pack for third place being led by a Giovinazzi that we don't actually lose any positions, only time to Sergio Perez. But we want to eliminate those sort of mistakes. We had a double lock up when I jumped on the brakes just a little bit too hard and that sent us deep into the corner. Just need a bit, be a bit more careful on the brakes. I do struggle with the braking in the wet conditions, but as you've noticed, the other end of the stick getting back on the power. I'm absolutely brilliant. We'll try to use that to our advantage to catch up to Perez. 2.8 seconds is the gap to the leader as we run it a little bit wide through turn number six. 
Oh, Luca Giotto is out of the Grand Prix. I have no idea what has happened to the Force India driver, but he is out of today's Austrian Grand Prix. And we are down to 21 runners, and it doesn't look like we're going to have a safety car or anything. Is Oh, we've just run it a little bit deep into turn number five. I was about to say, you can see we're starting to catch up to the back of Sergio Perez in the Tyrrell right as we make a bit of a mistake. I was too busy trying to figure out what had happened to Giotto and looking at the minimap trying to see where he was off the road. And now we're a little bit more time to try and make up to the Mexican is a little bit wide through the penultimate corner. That's going to lose us a bit more time again. Right on the back of Sergio Perez. Now can we try it up the inside at turn number five a little bit early on the brakes being a bit cautious. I'm going to just be patient behind the Tyrrell. Out of turn number two or turn number three, we have a much better a much better traction than the Mexican, and that is where we'll make our move. We just need to be patient right now. We're only on lap 14 of 36 in this Grand Prix, and we have the pace, so we, just, we, we can have the time just to be patient and make a nice, smart, calculated move for the lead. Through turn number one, and now on the straight up towards... Turn number two as Jeff is coming over with an alternate strategy. I'm not going to look at that right this second. Is now into turn number two. This is where we have much better traction than the Tyrrell driver. We're getting a lot of wheels being saying going under. No, he's squeezing me into the grass there. I had to get out of the throttle. A very interesting move there from Perez. We're not going to dive up the inside of turn number three. Like I said, I'm not too confident on the brakes, but I'm confident on the throttle and slip up the inside on Perez as he just struggles to find the traction in these very tricky conditions here in Austria. And we move ourselves into the lead of the Grand Prix. Oh, we've locked up. That's a double lock up up towards turn two. We've gone very, very deep, and that's going to lose us as the lead, isn't it? Sergio Perez is going to sneak past as we try to ease ourselves back onto the track, and we're side by side with Sergio Perez. We're on the outside as we head down towards turn number three. We're on the outside, which is not where you want to be. We're going to try right around the outside of the Tyrrell, around the outside of turn number three, and we retake the lead of this Grand Prix. Oh, we built out about two and a half second lead, but one little mistake, just too hard onto the brake pedal into turn two. Sends us white and gives Perez a golden opportunity, but he couldn't quite take it. Oh, Valtteri Bottas is now out of the Grand Prix. What on earth? And we've got a safety car. We have a safety car. We're not going to dive into the pit lane. There is no need to pit here as we are in full wet conditions as Jeff is giving me an alternate strategy but I don't see any point in it it's just going to another set of wets which is completely pointless right now our tire wear isn't too bad only 28% on the rears which is fine by me right now we can go up to about 75% before we have to worry about a puncture and considering we swapped onto these tires around lap 10 or something we're now on lap 18 we should be fine all the way through to the end of the Grand Prix now this is a new experience in our Formula 1 career, we're coming up to the safety car and we are the leader. It's going to be an interesting restart, we get to control the pace, we get to decide when we go something we haven't had the chance to do ever in Formula 1. A little bit nervous, you know, first time we're leading on a safety car restart in Formula 1, it's going to be interesting. So that was an interesting radio message I just got. The rain is going to ease up in five minutes time. So we could be switching back onto intermediate tires very, very soon. Here we go. The safety car is coming in this lap at the end of lap number 20. And we have to back up the field. And we get to decide when to go. I believe the safety car line is at the start of the pit lane where the merge line starts. We're going to keep a constant pace of about 75 kilometers an hour get the field nice and backed up the safety car is in the lane we're going to go now get onto the throttle get the power down it's been okay restart as okay the safe the green flag is actually further around this corner at that second line we're getting a bit on that curb as someone has some sort of problem we're not too sure who has the car problem we're going to cross the line to start lap number 21 and it's been a nice safety car restart we've held on to the lead of the Grand Prix. Oh, here comes Sergio Perez up our inside. We didn't have a good run. Onto the DRS straight. A lot of wheel spin, but back around the outside 
of the Tyrrell and we hold on to the lead of the Grand Prix. You can see they really do struggle in the traction zones. I'm not too sure what is wrong with them, but they really do struggle to get the power down and we hold on to the lead for now. Oh, a little bit sideways on the exit there. Now Perez is going to capitalize on that down the inside as we head down into the penultimate corner back around the outside of oh, Perez. Is he going into the pit lane? I think he might be. And I think Giovinazzi actually followed him. Uh, followed him in. Yes, both of them going into the pit lane. Why on earth are they pitting on lap 20, uh, start of lap 23? The track is nowhere near dry enough yet for the intermediate tires. And it makes no sense to swap onto another set of wets unless they are really struggling with the wear. And I don't think they would be. I've only got 19% on my fronts. I know I've got high wear on my rears. And that's because I really spin the wheels coming out of the corners. And that's how I seem to, ironically seem to find good traction out of these corners right here. You can see I'm getting a lot of wheel spin. The car is sideways. We've got the wheels sideways. And that's why I'm finding the good traction. So I doubt they're wearing the rear tires that much. It seems odd to swap onto, I'm assuming, onto another set of wet tires because I wouldn't say the track is ready for the Inters. Very strange call from Perez and Giovinazzi there, but they both made it and a few other cars did. Looking at the minimap, a plethora of cars have come into the pit lane. So, interesting call and now we are comfortably out in the lead. Science is in second place and then Sebastian Vettel and they are a little ways back. Not that far, looks like about three seconds and I've run a little bit wide as I'm uh, talking way too much but soon I think we're going to be swapping onto the intermediate tyres and right now it looks like it's going to be an easy 13 laps to the end. Okay so Science, Vettel and the other car in that trio have not dived into the pit lane like their teammates did on the previous lap so that's odd. I'm not too sure what is going on. I doubt those other cars swapped intermediate tyres. Possibly they could have, but I don't think it's ready. I haven't heard anything from Jeff. When the other cars think it's ready, I normally hear something from Jeff, and literally the whole field comes in in one go, and there are all their teammates come in on the very next lap. So I think they've all stopped for another set of wets and all shot themselves in the foot. Looks like it's going to be easy Grand Prix from here, oh, barring, you know, tricky conditions and a tricky car to drive. But we seem to have mastered that so far. Keep it on the black stuff and we should win this Grand Prix. Oh, viable strategy changes. I'm going through the final corner. Are you kidding me, Jeff? Really? Right then and there. It's now time to swap to the intermediate tyres as we start. Lap number 25. Jeff just coming over the radio a handful of seconds too late there. And we couldn't quite react to dive into the pit lane. We had just passed. The pit entrance and now we have to go a whole nother lap. Some of the cars that have dived into the pit lane for Inters have the chance to jump us. But none of the cars behind us, Science, Vettel or whoever else is in that trio have dived into the pits as well. So they got the call a little bit too late as well. So we should be safe from any form of undercut I think. So here we go into the pit lane the end of lap number 25. We're going to be swapping back onto intermediate tyres a fresh set of enters we've got to get the car stopped for the pit lane limiter a little bit of a lock up we got the car stopped very very comfortably as all the crews are coming out into the pit lane it must be daniel ricardo that is the third car in that trio behind us to come into our pit box changing onto the green walled intermediate tires and because those guys were three seconds back our pit lane position isn't going to affect us and we now rejoin the race and it looks like we have held on to the lead careful of the pit exit is quite easy to run wide into that pit wall on the pit exit, especially in these conditions. I remember, I think it was in 20, uh, 2016 last year, a GP2 driver actually uh, ended his race by crashing into that pit wall on the pit exit. And we have retained the lead of this Grand Prix with 10 laps to go. Science is in second, then it's Sebastian Vettel. And if we have a look back, you can see they are a little ways back. It should be an easy drive. The track is starting to dry up. And I do prefer intermediate conditions Two full wet conditions. These are going to have to be my preferred conditions out of all conditions on this game. So it should be an easy drive to the finish from here. Oh, no, no, no. Lock up, lock up, lock up. We've gone deep. We've gone very, very deep down into turn number two. Get the car back on the track. Just ease on and we should be okay. We've lost a lot of time, but we haven't lost position, thankfully. We've got Carlos Sainz behind us. He's still a little ways behind us. Is now down towards turn number three careful on the brakes and we get the car stopped this time we need to be careful into turn two it keeps catching us out it's a very heavy braking zone in wet conditions it's very easy you know just a pinch a brake and then you're just screwed after you pinch a brake you're in big big troubles we're running it a little bit wide no 
making mistakes, I need to focus on driving and not so much commentating as I've lost a little bit more time to the cars behind, but I still think we have a safe gap to Carlos Sainz in second place. The gap is down to 1.6 seconds after those few mistakes. We've lost three and a half seconds here in Austria as we have set, uh, eight laps to go. We still should be safe, I think, as long as we don't make any more big mistakes like we did right at this corner a little bit earlier on the brakes this time, and we get the car pulled up for the corner. Oh, no, 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 not another lockup. We're deep into turn number three, but I don't think that's going to hurt us too bad. Turn three is a corner where you don't, uh, don't lose too much by running wide as Science and Vettel are battling it out, and that should help us. Those two battling will lose them time and allow us to sort of counteract the little mistake we made so we don't lose too much time. But the gap is now down to 1.1 seconds, so we definitely did lose a little bit in that mistake. We just need to screw our head back on the right way and get our head back in the game. Oh, no, no, no. We're locking up a little bit on the front right. We just hold on. But as you can see, Science has hunted us down in that pack of three. And now things are not so comfortable as we're on lap 30. Of 36 here in Austria as we've run it a little bit wide through turn number five. We just need to keep calm. We still can win this. We do have the pace. As long as we stop making all these silly mistakes, we run a little bit wide through there. Right as I'm talking about silly mistakes, we make one. Is, is he going to try it up the inside of the penultimate corner? No, he is not. Science thinks better of that move. Is now down to the final corner, about to end lap 30 and start lap 31. We have six laps left to run here of this Austrian Grand Prix. And Science has a run. He's looking up our inside, down into turn number one. We're going to be careful on the brakes. That's where we keep getting caught out, cut back on science through turn number one and we retake the lead of this Grand Prix just playing it smart right now we are not strong on the brakes and now Vettel has a run on Carlos Science he has a very poor run out of that corner I thought Ricardo was about to go for it for a second I had to look back and that's compromised our run down into turn number two we get decent traction and we get much better traction than the three of them We've got Sebastian Vettel all over our gearbox. He's looking up our inside down into the penultimate corner right around the outside of the Ferrari. We're still going side by side down into the final corner around his outside. Yet again, we're still going side by side with the four-time world champion. But on the outside, on the racing line, we get better traction off the final corner. We're up. We're heading down towards turn one, I should say, and he's still got the inside line. Can we go for that same move that we pulled on Carlos Sainz? A cheeky switchback at turn number one. And we get the move, or we hold on to uh, first place, I should say, is this Carlos Sainz going to attack Sebastian Vettel up towards turn two? Yes, he is as we jump onto the brakes. Careful not to run it too deep down into this corner. A bit of a wide line is now onto the power. We get a better exit than the cars behind, and we should be able to breathe down to turn number three. Here comes Sebastian Vettel, he's going up our inside as we head down towards turn number two. Can we go for a switch back? I don't think Science has his nose there and he doesn't. Back on the power, better traction than Sebastian Vettel and back into the lead of this Grand Prix as we have three and a half laps left to run of this Austrian Grand Prix. Oh, Vettel's diving up the outside through turn number five. We're going to have to try to give him space on the exit. We leave him some space on the outsides now. Through turn number six, we're going to try to squeeze him out, and he can't hold it around the outside. Very opportunistic there from Seb. Surprised he went for that, because there's no way he was going to pull that off around the outside of turns five and turn six. As, uh, six is now through the last two corners. We're about to start lap uh, 34 of 36. We get a little bit wide on the exit curb. We now have three laps to go here in Austria, and Seb is going up our inside down into turn number one. Can we try that same switch back that we pulled off a couple laps ago. Yes, we can. And back into the lead. Very, very easy. They get the run down the pit straight, and then they just compromise themselves down into the first corner. Just use my head, and I get the switch back. So I think Science is going for it on Sebastian Vettel just behind us. Oh, no. No, no, no. We've locked up. We've locked up down into turn number two. With only two laps to go, we're out on... On the AstroTurf, trying to get back on the track, we've got Carlos Sainz right alongside us. We just had to be so, so careful on the rejoins. Now Ricardo is getting past us as well as we head down towards turn number three. Ricardo is going for the move on Carlos Sainz as we lock it up. Again, down into turn number three. Try to find the traction off turn three to the inside of Daniel Ricardo and possibly Carlos Sainz down 
into turn number five. No, we cannot make that stick, but we can on Daniel Ricciardo, I think, squeeze him out on the exit, and we make that move stick. Now back into third place, we have a lap and a little bit to go here in Austria. A <laughs> crucial mistake on the penultimate lap. I cannot believe it. I've been so, so strong this weekend, but that's the one thing that keeps catching me out here in Austria, the braking for turn number two is a little bit wide through the penultimate corner. We're about to start the final lap of this Austrian Grand Prix. We have fuel to burn up into Rich Revs. We're on the back of Carlos Sainz in the Tyrrell, hard on the brakes for the first corner. Get the car turned in back on the power in the slipstream of the Tyrrell up towards turn number two. I think we're gonna be close enough to go for a dive with the slipstream and Rich Revs up the inside of Carlos Sainz down into turn number two. Careful on the brakes, we can't afford to go deep again, but we have to stay up the inside of Carlos Sainz. Squeeze him out, we get that move done onto the power as now we have Sebastian Vettel up next. We head down towards turn number three. We know we have superior traction out of this corner and that's what we're gonna have to use hard on the brakes for turn number three. Down to the corner, hold it tight on the exit, onto the power and back into the lead of the Grand Prix with half a lap to go here in Austria. Unbelievable scenes, we just made three overtakes in two laps as we run it wide through turn number five. There is still a chance for us to make another mistake as we set another purple sector. We're gonna keep the car in Rich Revs until the end. We have enough fuel to run until the end in Rich. Is Seb gonna try it into the penultimate corner? He's not gonna be close enough through the penultimate corner a little bit of understeer we get through there successfully now to the final corner where we bottled it in qualifying careful on the power Seb is right on our gearbox but we're going to come across the line to win the Austrian Grand Prix in some very very difficult conditions starting last on the grid we've gone through the entire field make made heaps of mistakes and come away with the victory that that is unbelievable here in Austria. I cannot believe that. We started last on the grid after bottling our qualifying lap and we've come through to win the race here in Austria. Holy shit, what a race that was. Far out. We have won the Austrian Grand Prix after starting 22nd on the grid. But you can see in the next column to the right, one of the crucial factors in this race, everyone else made three stops. I only made two. It seems like all those guys pit for a second set of the wet tires when I was talking about Giovinazzi and those guys making that stop. So those other guys like Vettel, Sainz and Ricardo must have also made that stop, which seems like a very odd strategy, but it's helped us. And we've got all the way from last on the grid to first overall in the race. Of course, joining us on the podium is Sebastian Vettel and Carlos Sainz, the two guys we were finding so much at the end. And of course, Daniel Ricardo as well and it ended up only being two tenths separating myself and Sebastian Vettel. Just behind Daniel Ricciardo you had Pierre Gasly finishing in fifth place so a great result there for the Toro Rosso team with Roman Grosjean just behind him in sixth place in the Williams so another great result there for Williams both of them beating Sergio Perez in the Tyrrell he started on the front row of the grid and could have had pole if Vettel didn't set the exact same time as him and that, uh, that second pit stop for the uh, wet tires definitely hurt Sergio dropping down to seventh place he was in position to battle with me for the win in that Grand Prix the two of us had broken away at the front and he made an extra pit stop and it cost Perez I don't know what must be going through Perez's mind right now he's had a tough season so far and his bef uh, best performance in qualifying and his best performance in the race was ruined by a dodgy strategy and ended up falling all the way back into seventh place it must be hard for Sergio with his teammate leading the championship Carlos Sainz absolutely dominating at the moment finishing in third place today he keeps his 100% record of finishing on the podium in this season in eighth place was Nico Hulkenberg from Renault with Giovinazzi just behind him Giovinazzi was so close to getting his first ever Formula One podium but just like Perez he made he made that same strategic uh, mistake pitting for that second set of wet ties and that hurt Antonio dropping him down to ninth place then you have Esteban Ocon just behind him rounding out the points finishes and looking at the gaps I just noticed between Giovinazzi and Esteban Ocon was two thousandths of a second so Giovinazzi and Ocon going across the line side by side very very close between the two young stars 
In 11th place was Fernando Alonso and Max Verstappen. Just behind him, both of, and Stoffel Van Dorn in 13th. The three of them really struggling in this race. Both, oh, all, not both, all three of them started in the top 10 in 8th, 5th, and 7th respectively and finished 11th, 12th, and 13th all outside of the points. I think the strategy again hindered those three. I thought they would have been on for a points finish. I know Alonso had a very bad start and he dropped back, but I'm not too sure what happened to Verstappen and Stoffel Van Dorn. In 14th place was Pascal Verlein from Williams with Kevin Magnussen in the Haas in 15th. And he had our teammate Kamui Kobayashi finishing in 16th place with Daniel Kvyat in 17th. Charles Leclerc in 18th. And then the two BMW Saubers rounding out the field with Delatraz getting the edge over his British teammate. Then, of course, the two guys that did not finish this race. You got Luca Gyoto, who DNF'd quite early on in the race, and of course Valtteri Bottas, who caused that safety car. I'm assuming both of them had mechanical issues. Actually, Gyoto had an instant terminal damage. Bottas was a mechanical failure, and I'm sure both, uh, all of you already know that because I will have shown you guys replays but of course I live commentate these videos so I don't see the replays that I put on screens when I edit it so I don't actually know what happens to these guys when I'm actually doing the race and commentating them. I don't even know them at what's happened at this stage of the race. I'd only know it when I actually go back through and look through the replay cameras and then put the video together. After the Austrian Grand Prix, unsurprisingly, Carlos Sainz is still leading the World Championship now with two race wins in hand, a 53-point lead over second place. And now, in second place, you actually find myself there. I have jumped up above Stoffel Van Dorn with today's race win in some very tricky conditions. I am sitting on 70 points. Like I said, 53 points back of Carlos Sainz. Now 10 points ahead of the McLaren driver, Stoffel Van Dorn. In fourth place, you have Daniel Ricciardo, who's only five points back off Van Dorn, so it looks like it's going to be a very close fight for second place in the championship between myself, Van Dorn, and Ricardo. but it doesn't look like anyone can match Carlos Sainz, who has had a very, very strong start to the season. Six podiums in six races so far. It's going to take something drastic to happen for anyone to catch Sainz at this stage of the season, but anyway, continuing down the order, you have Nico Hulkenberg sitting in fifth place with 44 points, and then you have the teammate of championship leader, Sergio Perez, sitting in sixth place, only only two points back off Hulkenberg. He had a great qualifying here in Austria and a good performance in the race, but the strategy hindered him. Ho he's hoping that this uh, upturn in form will continue on to the next race at Silverstone. He can finally start to chew into his teammates' championship lead and hopefully come back in. The Tyrrell does look like the strongest car in the field at this stage of the season. So if anyone has a chance, it is probably Sergio Perez, of course. He's a very, very quick driver. He just needs to get himself out of this slump. And I... Uh, uh, ignoring the strategy issues today in Austria. I think he is starting to find his way out of that slump. But anyway, just behind him, uh, just behind Perez in the championship is Fernando Alonso. Just one point back in seventh place. So a very close battle for fifth place between, uh, between the two Renaults and Sergio Perez. And then behind them, you have the two Ferraris with rookie Antonio Giovinazzi currently having the upper hand on four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel. Of course, Vettel really, really did struggle in the early few races of the season. But today, he picked up up a podium and finally got himself into the top 12 on the champion and the uh, in the world drivers championship he's sitting on 24 points only two points back of his much less experienced team Antonio Giovinazzi and Vettel is actually tied for points with Valtteri Bottas both on 24 points each in the constructors' standings, Tyrrell are absolutely running away with things right now. They have an 80-point lead over Renault Sport F1, who is sitting in second place. And then right behind Renault is McLaren. Only one point separating Renault and McLaren, so it looks like it's going to be a very close battle between the two for second place in the constructors. And, you know, Red Bull could get involved in this battle. They are 11 points back off McLaren, sitting in fourth place with 73 points. And then just behind them, you have Toyota, of course, are sitting in fifth on 70 points. I don't really think we're going to be able to really challenge in the Constructors title though. With Kamui not really pulling his weight in terms of scoring points, it's going to be very, very difficult with just uh, one driver uh, scoring the points. In 6th place, you have Ferrari still not really getting many points on the board there for the Scuderia. They'll be wondering what on earth has gone wrong in the first half of the season. We're hoping to turn that around for the second half. So they're currently sitting on 50 points, uh, 20 points behind ourselves, Toyota in 5th place. In 7th place is 4th India on 29 points, 5 points ahead of Williams who are sitting in 8th place. Then you got Toro Rosso in 9th on 19 points, just 5 points back off Williams. So it's looking like a close battle between 
Force India, Williams and Toro Rosso. But at this stage, Force India have the upper hand. And then you got Haas F1 team rounding out the top 10 on 6 points. And then BMW Sauber in last place with 1 point. So that is going to do it for today, guys. But first, I just want to briefly mention something. A few weeks back, I announced that I'd be doing a Q&A for 1,000 subscribers. But as you probably noticed, I haven't done that yet. But don't fear, I am going to do it very, very soon. Probably in the next week from when you guys are seeing this. I haven't recorded it yet. And at the time you're seeing this, I won't have recorded it. So it is not too late to get your questions in. So make sure you do comment them down below. If you have anything you want to ask me, it can be motorsport related. You ask me whatever you like, it really doesn't matter, it can be as random as you want, preferably motorsport related, or something to do with YouTube, or something about me, but, I don't know, ask me anything you want, comment, the down, comment it down below with hashtag Q&A, and I'll hopefully get around to making that video in the next week, I know I should have done it a few weeks ago, but you know, MotoGP and Dirt 4 coming out, I wanted to focus on the new game, so... It's coming out very, very soon, so don't you worry about that. But that is going to do it for today, guys. Next time out, we head to Silverstone, one of my favorite tracks on the calendar. You know, Silverstone, a classic track, and I cannot wait for that round of the season. And that should be coming out tomorrow, because this should be going out on the Saturday. That's right, double upload this weekend to make up for me missing, an, uh, missing a week a few weeks back. But that is going to do it for today, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you do smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been X Pitcher and I'll see you all next time.